Welcome back to Arts 101. I'm so glad you've tuned in. We've really got a great show planned for tonight. Now, as you've seen, our backdrop has evolved over the last few shows. The painting was designed by Kirsten Dornkamp and family and will continue to progress as our shows do. It is a sort of art in progress. In another progression and segue from last month, we had a wonderful interview with Shannon Grissom as we discussed her new CD coming out, as well as her show. In addition, we also mentioned her art gallery exhibit opening at the Black Sage. Now, luckily for you, this month we bring in some coverage of the Sock Monkey exhibit at the Black Sage, brought to you by Val Jeffrey. So I introduce to you, monkeys, monkeys, monkeys. I'm Val Jeffrey. I'm the producer for this segment of Arts 101, and I'm at the Black Sage Gallery in Hollister with my very f favorite person in the whole world, Shani Grissom. <laughs> Thank you. She was our guest in the studio last month, but this is the day that her exhibit starts. So, can you show me some things around here? Oh, Shani? I'd be happy to. Why don't we start with the very first thing that started this off? Okay, the very first sock monkey. Which Perfect. was? That's uh, I Will Remember You. And I can actually show you the, the actual sock monkey. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it! it. <laughs> the painting that started it all is this, this one here. This is called I Will Remember You. And what happened was there was this competition and you had to paint a pear and a fish and relate it to someone you something you knew well i, I went into safeway and i there's no way i could keep the fish in my studio that just didn't turn me on but i found these goldfish crackers and i thought they didn't say what kind of fish and they were happy so i picked those and i grabbed the pear and, and when i got home I saw my mom's, or I, I, you know, I went by there, I have a trunk with my mom's things that I got after she passed, and I remembered the sock monkey in the trunk. So I went in the trunk, pulled him out, and I thought, ah, oh, this is perfect, I'll do a tribute to my mother. So this is a black and white photo of my mom and her cousin when they were little, and the kazoo is because she was a music major uh, with a sense of humor, so that, that's how the painting got started. And the, uh, the competition, well, it, it uh, fizzled out. I never did enter the competition, but this started the whole ball rolling. Oh, good to see you. How you doing? Good to see you. Come on in and see the monkeys. <laughs> this is Clyde. Clyde is the reason this whole exhibit is here. Clyde is the very first monkey made of sakis. He was made for my mother, so I'm guessing in the late 1930s. And uh, so who knew when they made this monkey what it would start? And you wrote a children's book, Monkey Made of Sockies, about Clyde. I sure did write a book called Monkey Made of Sockies. What happened was I I paint another sock monkey painting and another, and before you know it, I thought, you know, I, I think I have enough illustrations to actually write a book. So I created this wonderful children's book called Monkey Made of Sockies, and after that, things just grew. I had the book signing at a country club here in town, and the CEO at the time said, you know what, they would make great golf club head covers. And so I licensed my work. Well, I had a prototype made. It, was, it, it, it wasn't quite that instant. It took about a year. And I licensed my work to Daphne's Head Covers, and now it's a golf club head cover sold around the world. Kind of a Forrest Gump kind of story. <laughs> Can you show it to me? Yeah, let's go see it. 
You know what? He loves being in the cart and riding around. And, and the best thing about having Monkey Made of Sockies in the cart is that no matter what kind of swing you've taken, no matter how bad your shot you know, goes, you take a look at him and he's smiling. And, you know, it helps you get over your bad self. <laughs> <laughs> The other cool thing is we've come full circle. Here the, the sock monkey painting was a tribute to my mother. And now um, I've teamed up with Daphne, who is the manufacturer of the, of the head cover, and LPGA pro Lita Lindley. And what we do is we give a percentage of our profits back to uh, Prater Willie, and we help children that are affected by Prater Willie. So uh, my mom's still helping kids. I'm Val Jeffrey, and until next time, please keep supporting the arts. Now, so far in this show, we've covered professional gallery artists, local theaters, as well as up and coming musical artists, but we have yet to show you any performing dancers. So, for this next segment, we have our very own Tommy Rodriguez and B-Boy in a local dance-off. To hip-hop artists, hip-hop is not just a type of music, dancing, or culture. It's a way of life. So now, let's check out the newest developments in the Gilroy art scene. Yo, what's going on? My name is Derek. They call me Derek. Um, I represent Flex Flav and Supreme Soul. Uh, I also represent a dope clothing line named Street Scientist. And um, I've been dancing for about uh, eight years.
for the finals and the champion of King of the Hill. And Morgan Hill, three, two, one. The next segment was contributed by Hollister student Josiah Guerrero. He acted in a recent play at the Granada Theater, also in Hollister, called How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. He's given you some snippets of the play in this next piece to introduce you to the production. Watch out for the entire play coming out on CMAP channels all over the next months. My name is Josiah Guerrero. I'm here in the CMAP television studio wearing a shirt from Little Shop of Horrors? That's not the right shirt. This is the shirt. In How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, I was... Mr. Benjamin Burton Daniel Ovington. I'm here to show you some of what I think are the best scenes in this whopping two hour and 30 minute production by the San Benito Stage Company. In How to Succeed, you'll learn some valuable lessons, such as not to get addicted to coffee because of what might happen if there's no coffee. No coffee! You also learn something that these guys need to learn about her. They need to Because a secretary is not a toy, no, my boy, not a toy. If they don't learn this valuable lesson, like Mr. Gatch apparently didn't. Yes, Mrs. Maruna, large operation like pro Boy, there he goes again. Say, Hattie, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I've got a date with my gentleman friend. Come on, you're the big leagues now. You don't want to be messing around with small fry. They might end up in Mr. Gatch's situation. Huh? Mr. Gatch? Oh. He's been transferred to one of our out-of-town offices. <laughs> Venezuela. How to Succeed is full of everything from fancy footwork. How can you get anywhere in the near have no fear? Snappy scenes. <laughs> daring acrobatics. And superior strength to rivalry. <laughs> Ear pressure, supplication, romance, Will you marry Jay Carepotfish? No, kiss me. <laughs> and really cool dances, such as, get ready, tap dances, oh, no ballroom dances, oh, a mix of swing, And ballet. <laughs> and many more. You'll see many different people, such as special guests, <laughs> washwoman, <laughs> pirates, <laughs> a TV announcer, the worldwide wicked treasure girl, <laughs> and a potential candidate for. You'll see fear. And what's this? Dishonesty. Let's, let's just keep watching the program. You'll get answers to several questions, such as Who got this lovely lady? Was it them? Or him? Well, it's time to start bringing this trailer to a close. Don't forget to give everyone who made this production possible a hand. Including the orchestra. And tell them to break a leg. And their next performance. If you like this video and you're looking to learn more about 
how to make one of your own, why not try coming down to CMAP? No, 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 you can't make me. Well, no, we can't, but we will still be. And we will be. Joy Boys! Well, maybe not. But you'll see a lot of smiling faces <laughs> when you come by and join the more than 350 CMAP members in like Brotherhood and sisterhood of our CMAP family. Well, that's it for this trailer. We hope you enjoyed it and want to see you soon. Good luck. In whatever you decide to do. <laughs> Bye for now. This month, we bring in a renowned storyteller as our January Artist of the Month, Julie Inglehart, who presents her gypsy pirate costume. Julie tells her stories to audiences of all shapes and sizes in venues throughout the area. In fact, she appeared as Mrs. Claus in several venues in December. So I introduce to you, Julie Inglehart. Hi there. Hi. Wonderful to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having being... me. Of course, of course. So. Um, Tell me a little bit about this idea you have, uh, this business you've started. Right. Well, it's called Storytime Adventures. And um, I started it back in July in Hollister, okay. where I live. And um, my first few times that I did this was at Mars Hill Coffee House. I'd contacted them to see if they'd be open to doing a story mm -hmm. time. And they were. So I did three during the summer. One was as a pirate. One was more of an animal jungle theme. And one was about transportation. Then I did a couple in October for Halloween, and then in December I purchased a Mrs. Claus outfit with full dress and apron and <laughs> wig, and I've been going to many different places as Mrs. Claus and doing story time as well. It's been wonderful. That's, that's so exciting. You know, I, lo I love the idea because, y you know, in modern society nowadays, you know, kids have so, I mean, it's obvious, kids have so many things and there's so much struggle for to get their attention and I think it's a great way to improve you know child literacy you know right exactly and that was one of my my intent as well I've met a man about 10 years ago in Southern California where we used to live who grew up functionally illiterate and he didn't learn how to read till he was uh. 35 years old and he always would get the message across he works for a library that how important it is for kids to know how to read but then also for parents to read to their children as well and not when they're four or five years old but even when we get to be maybe even 10 or 12 years old it's important that parents are able to model for their children how important reading is absolutely i, I couldn't agree more now um so you've been to schools in hollister am i correct hollister and gilroy um i was also featured at yusugi farms in morgan hill during Halloween. Um, I've read to Girl Scout groups. I was at Chamberlain's Children's Center, which is a group home in Hollister. I uh, was also at Emmaus House, which is a center for abused women. And so I've been all over the place and I've been just doing a lot of different story times and it's, it's been a wonderful response from the community. That's great, I'm, I'm so great to hear. Now, if anybody wants to find out more or how to contact you or they, let's say they want you to read at uh, some type of function, oh, how, how, how would they find you? Where would they go? The best way to get in touch with me is through my website, okay. which is storytimeadventures.wetpaint.com. Okay, great. Okay, well, now, luckily, uh, we're going to read us a story, am I correct? I am, exactly. Okay, so we have mm -hmm. Bubble Bath Pirates. Hi, I'm storyteller Julie Englehart, and I'm here today to read one of my favorite stories, called Bubble Bath Pirates. I hope you'll enjoy this story. Bath time, calls out the pirate mommy. Arg, call out her little pirates. Yo-ho, yo-ho, it's off to the bath we go. The water is just right, says the pirate mommy. All hands on deck, say her little pirates. Walk the plank, commands the pirate mommy. Aye, aye, matey, say her little pirates. Here's your washcloth, says the pirate mommy. Raise the sails, command her little pirates. Don't forget to scrub under your arms, pleads the pirate mommy. Ahoy, our arms be ticklish, giggle her little pirates. Close your eyes, warns the pirate mommy. Blimey, mumble her little pirates. 
Make sure you scrub your back, says the pirate mommy. Shiver me timbers, say her little pirates. Bath time is over, says the pirate mommy. Prepare the cannons, yell her little pirates. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now who wants buried treasure in the kitchen? Asked the pirate mommy. Gangway, yell her little pirates. Yo ho, yo ho, we're now so sparkling clean. We're off to get our bounty of chocolate fudge ice cream. So there you have it. Bubble Bath Pirates, a wonderful story. You know, I just love the whole concept. You know, reading is so important, especially at a young age. So thank you to Julie for being on the show. Truly a delight. And now we bring to you the calendar events for January, read by Monica Riapel. Remember, you can submit upcoming events to us at cmaptv at gmail.com. Hello, my name is Monica Riapel with CMAP TV, and here is a list of the upcoming Arts 101 events for January 2011. On December 31st, from 8.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., the Aromas Grange will be having their New Year's Eve concert event featuring the Rayburn Brothers. On January 2nd, from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m., the historic Gaslighter Theater reopens with a melodrama and vaudeville review. For more information, contact their website at www.gaslighter.com. On January 16th, the Galleria Tontanzan will be having their 19th annual Images of the Virgin exhibit, located in San Juan Batista. On January 4th through 29th, the Black Sage Gallery will be having the wildlife and nature photographer, Gero Hein. And on January 8th from 7 to 9 p.m., the Mars Hill Coffee House, located in Hollister, features Josh Rosenblum. For more information, you can contact cmap.tv. I'm Monica Riapel with Arts 101. Thanks and have a good new year. Thanks again for tuning in to Arts 101. Keep in touch with us and let us know about the great events along Highway 101.